All right, so we are coming back to our pointillist painting. Um, you should have already uh, found a picture of a landscape, put it into fresh paint, and started painting over it. Um, yesterday we focused on selecting one color and finding every place where it exists in your painting. Um, and now we're going to start with a, with a slightly different approach. Um, and this is the way that I'll want you to kind of continue your painting through to the end. Um, so I want you to zoom in. So I'm going to start start here. Okay, so I want you to zoom in pretty far. And I'm going to keep using this color selector, although you don't have to only use this color selector. You can also, uh, you know, use the, um, the color, color tools here. Uh, but I'm going to start here. And I'm going to take a look at these brushes. So, um, so I'd like to show you some different uh, things you can do with these brushes, right? So, so last time I stuck with this round brush, uh, but I want to show you some different options here because we have different brushes. Um, this flat brush makes horizontal lines. You can see it a little better there. Um, so uh, unfortunately, in, in this program, you can't change the direction of that line, uh, but it can be useful. Um, I've seen students use it for some really great textures, like um, the surface of, um, of water is a really great place to use this horizontal line. This is the flat brush again. Um, any place where you have kind of a um, you know, horizontal texture, a great place to use this. Um, we've also got, uh, this is the Filbert, Filbert brush. Um, this gives you kind of a blob. Let me reduce that size a little bit here. All right, so this gives you kind of a diagonal slash. It's kind of round on one side and straight on the other. Um, and then this is probably my favorite. Um, although I don't, I'm not a big fan of fan brushes in real life, um, the fan brush in fresh paint um, has a really nice um, kind of irregular shape. It changes um, each time you use it, um, which is really nice for creating some natural textures. All right. So, um, so those are your, your brush tip, tip options. Um, and, you know, don't forget that you can always make things bigger or smaller depending on the area that you're painting in. You know, if you have a large area that's really one solid color, like, um, you know, a clear sky or um, silhouettes of, you know, like my trees here aren't exactly the same color. You see some texture of the bark showing through, but um, but I could definitely use a use a bigger brush here to to cover that area um, where you have larger areas of um, a fairly solid color. Um, but I don't want your whole painting to be like that. You know, with a landscape, uh, part of why I chose landscape as our subject um, is that you there's a lot of color variation, um, a lot of subtle changes that you see, you know, in the color of the sky as it fades from one color to another, in the texture of a mountain, in the texture of leaves or grass. All right, so I want, I really want you looking for those, um, those color variations. Um, so again, I want you at this point um, to be working mostly zoomed in. Right? So every once in a while, you'll want to zoom out and kind of see what it's looking like. Uh, but I want you to be painting zoomed in. Um, this way you can really um, get a closer look at, that, at those color variations and see, um, you know, see what colors really are there. Uh, I want you to really be exercising your eyes, looking really hard to see... Um, where the colors change, where they're different. Right, I'm going to pick another color here, this kind of blue-gray. Right, so once I exhaust one color, 
um, in this zoomed in area. I'm going to switch to another, try and find all the places where I see this. Right? And I picked this area because um, this mountain has some has some strong texture. Right? I don't want you to just blanket it with one color and lose all this good texture. All right, so by using my, my dots of different colors, I'm creating um, this kind of rocky, dappled texture in the side of the mountain. Okay, now I'm going to try a darker color. So this isn't the darkest color, but it's on the darker side. And just trying to look for the dark spots here. All right. And as I, as I get up here, these darker spots are a little bit bluer. So I'm going to leave some of that for a bluer shade. Um, and again, I want to remind you that we are, um, the goal here is to cover the entire picture, right? I don't want um, any of your original picture showing through. Um, a, a finished project is all your work. Okay, now I'm going to go for this kind of bluer, dark color. All right, so again, you're trying to really fill it in. Make sure you're covering all those little spots where the, where the picture could be showing through. I think I'm now going to switch to a different brush over here. Um, Let's try this one. All right, the fan brush is great, but it also, you don't have quite as much control over where the edge lands. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna go to, go to the round brush. All right, so I'm using this to just kind of finish up. Um, definitely for, you know, kind of edges, You've got a little more control with that round brush. Um, edges are, especially with this technique, right? It's it's kind of easy to lose the edges of things um, amidst the dots and kind of lose the clearness of your image. So definitely pay some special attention to your edges. Right, make sure those are. Clear. All right, so now I've got a really nice texture on this mountain. I've got different shades of color kind of interacting, and this is looking pretty good to me. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more here um, in the sky to kind of show you this transition, right? So um, we've got kind of a smooth transition here between this green. Um, and the, this kind of dusty purple. So um, I've got a lot of that green in already, so I'm gonna grab this purple. And again, I'm gonna keep it on that round brush um, to, uh, to help me keep this edge nice and, nice and clear, a little bit bigger. Oops.
Um, and again, I am using my finger on the directly on the touch screen. I highly recommend you do the same. Um, and if you're not sure how to zoom in, I should probably say this, right? So um, there isn't a zoom in or out button in Fresh Paint. You need to use your fingers on the, uh, the touch screen or your trackpad, right? So I pinch my fingers together and I spread them out to zoom in and then opposite to zoom out. Um, while I'm zoomed in, in order to scroll, you need to use two fingers, right? Moving with two fingers. It's really important that you guys work zoomed in on this project. Um, it will help you immensely to really see, um, see the color variations. Okay, so I'm kind of filling in this grayish purple area. And of course I'm leaving some of these dots of lighter blue and green that I made. And as I get towards that green, I'm spacing my dots out a little bit more. Right. And now I'm going to grab this kind of in-between color and fill in a little bit here, All right? So anytime you're transitioning between colors, um, you are, you know, where the color is strong, you want to put those dots close together. Um, so you've got mostly that color. And then as, um, as the color shifts, um, you let your dots get further apart and fill in those empty areas with the, with the next color um, in your transition. All right, so I'm, um, for this transition, I'm essentially using three colors, three kind of areas of color. Um, I've got this, this dusty purple, um, this more gray color, and then the light green. Um, right, so I started with really thick purple, and then I started spacing my purple out more, um, and then I s started with that gray, putting those in pretty densely, uh, but spreading them out across, in both directions, across the purple um, and the green. Right. And now I'm going to come back to this green color. I'm going to choose a slightly darker shade of it to help me with that transition. And speckling it in, maybe I'll reduce that brush size. Um, a smaller brush size can really help you um, get a smoother transition where you don't want to have just big big blobs of that color. All right. Now I've got this, right? So I've got this really nice textured, um, kind of dappled texture on the mountain. Um, I've got this nice transition using my dots between um, that dusty purple and the green. Um, so as you as you continue to work on this, I again I want you to be zoomed in most of the time. Um, when you finish an area, you know zoom out, take a look at how it looks. You know maybe when you're zoomed out, um, you'll realize that you know oh, I need more. I need to smooth out this transition. I need to add more of this color. Or, um, maybe blot out some of these dots that are a little too strong. All right, so it's always good to take a step back, zoom out every once in a while, um, see how it's looking. Um, and when you finish an area, you know, move on, like scroll to the side of it. All right, so I might go over here to continue with this transition, and you're just gonna kind of work your way around the picture that way um, until you've got it all covered. Um, thank you so much. 
Um, I, I hope you like this project. Um, I know it, it can be a little tedious at times, um, but keep at it. It can be relaxing too, right? Um, and again, just my, the, the really most important thing here um, is that you're zooming in and you're really challenging yourself to look for those colors, look for the subtle variations in colors. All right. Thanks so much, guys. Have a good one.